Broken Lens Focus Productions presents. We are now in focus. It wasn't broken. My camera was just having a fit. Broken Lens Productions presents a very special tape recording device from the 1960s. I believe this recorder came out in the year 1967 initially. Perhaps something like that. Although I saw the service manual online and it was dated 1969. But anywho, this is a very special portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder shown right here in its leather case. I know this is not at a nice angle, but you can see slightly, if you pay careful attention, a reel through that window. That is a classic sight to behold. We'll go and zoom down here, and you'll see that this unit is made by Tanberg. We open this pouch. To find that unfortunately nothing is stored inside. But it is the right size to, to store extra 5 inch reels. Although one could also put inside a microphone. Made for use by reporters, this unit has a shoulder strap for portability. I know, right? The shoulder strap can be removed simply by pushing the things out like that. Now we can examine the unit. So let's go ahead and take the front part off here and you can see the uh, controls on the front of the unit. Go ahead and angle this up so you can see that better. So you can see the various controls this unit has to offer. Uh, it's very nice and um, anywho, uh, we have an XLR microphone jack and, a, and, a, and a, an accessory jack for hooking up an external power supply. We have inputs for low and high, outputs for monitor and line, they have different impedances. Record button, you hold it down while you put it up into the forward position to initiate recording. A limit button so you can turn on a limiter, which is like an automatic level control combined with manual level control. A playback button to go into playback mode, that is monitor tape. If it's in playback position while it's recording, it will monitor from the tape being a three head unit. If the playback is up while recording, it will monitor direct without the uh, playback head being used. If the speaker button is pushed in, the internal speaker is used. If it's pushed out, it's disabled and you can hear it through headphones. There's a microphone level control and a line level control separately so that you can mix the two together. There's a speed selector for 1 and 7 eighths inches per second, 3 and 3 fourths inches per second, and 7 and 1 half inches per second. You got the playback volume. Rewind, fast forward, uh, play, and an instant stop. Mechanical pause. The unit has zippers on the side. We can unzip the unit on either side. Careful. Once the unit is unzipped, we can open up and see the Tanberg Model 11, or more precisely, the Tanberg Model 11-2, which is a two-track mono unit. This recorder had come in various different configurations. There was a full-track mono, a two-track mono, and then there were versions that also had a pilot track for use with film synchronization by putting a pilot tone on the tape. This is not the pilot model. And there were also, this one has an XLR microphone jack, but there were also versions that had a DIN microphone jack instead. This unit takes a whopping 10 
D size batteries to run on 15 volts. Although in the future I plan on installing a battery holder to allow it to run on simply four 18650 lithium ion cells. But for now we'll be running it on the D cells. Also, the unit has a battery eliminator which you can put in place of the batteries like that to allow the unit to run off the AC line. This is an international voltage device currently set for 110 volt operation. It may be international but the lowest voltage is 110 volts. So if it was operated in Japan, it would be 10 volts under voltage, but I bet it would still work fine. Currently, this unit is working on all original parts, believe it or not. Even being about 50 years old. Let's rewind this tape and play. Soviet Russian music from the year I was born. Now you'll notice right now, it's running at 3 inches, 4 inches per second, and we have 5 inch reels loaded on it. Now you'll notice there's lots of space in between the head cover and the reels. This unit will actually accept up to 7 inch reels but when you have 7 inch reels loaded on this unit the cover has to be open and the one drawback in the design in my opinion is that the cover is not made to be easily removed it looks like it might be easy but I'm afraid to uh, apply too much force because it doesn't seem to want to give easily and I don't want to break the plastic so that's the only design flaw I would say in that regard because I'd like to be able to easily carry it around and stuff yet have 7 inch reels loaded on it. So you have to have the door open but the door is still on the machine if you have 7 inch reels. But of course with 5 inch or less you can just close it like that. Another thing about this unit is it does not show the uh, playback level on the meter, just the record level. You can push the battery test button to show the battery level on the meter. So now let's go ahead and that's the instant stop or the mechanical pause. Let's make some recordings. As of right now I do not have an XLR plug available. I have XLR jacks but they reside in Arkansas. I will have access to borrow an XLR jack in the near future but my eagerness to make this video is to the extent that I'm making it right now. But believe it or not, the low input, although not intended for microphone use, will accept a microphone. So I plugged in the high impedance version of the Sony F96 dynamic microphone. Now we'll go ahead and push the record button in. We'll do the instant stop, put it into position, and we can set our recording level, but we're using the input instead of the mic level because we're using a line input as opposed to the XLR. And start the tape in motion. Now this, now this being, being a three-head three unit, unit, you can, you can hear, hear my voice, voice coming out of the unit, unit in real, real time, time basically. basically. Or, or with, with a, a delay. delay if I go out of playback mode, you'll just hear the direct audio coming through the amplifier. Hello, hello, test. Kind of like a PA system, but then you go to playback, playback mode, mode and you hear, hear the, the uh, audio. audio. Another, Another thing, thing about, about this, this is you can hear this high frequency, frequency noise in the recording. In the recording. Now, that's now that's from, from the, the motor, motor speed, speed control, control circuitry. circuitry. The, noise the noise is somehow is getting, getting into the amplifier, the amplifier and I wouldn't and be too surprised if it was leaky capacitors with the filtering of the sound or something like that. 
but it but is, is other than, other that, than that, that, that sound, it's, it's a very, very good, good quality, quality unit. unit. The pinch the roller is rubber, has seen, has seen better, better days, days, but it, but it still, still manages, manages to run, run rather, rather well. well. The unit is now being rewound to play back the recordings I've made. Start the tape in motion. Now this being a three head unit, you can hear my voice coming out of the unit in real time, basically. Or with a, a delay. If I go out of playback mode, you'll just hear the direct audio coming through the amplifier. Hello, hello, test. Kind of like a PA system, but then you go to playback mode and hear the uh, audio. Another thing about this is you can hear this high frequency noise in the recording. Now that's from the motor speed control circuitry. The noise is somehow getting into the amplifier, and I wouldn't be too surprised if it was a uh, leak. Even when the tape is stopped, you can hear that sound. The capacitors. More when it's playing back the tape. The sound or something like that. It's in the recording. But it is, other than that, the sound, it's a very good quality unit. The pinch roller's rubber has seen better days, but it still manages to run rather well. Anyway, I turned the camera off and I'm continuing to talk into the recorder at three and three fourths inches per second. And um, anyway, it's a very interesting tape recorder, very solidly built, intended for professional and semi-professional use. It's a very nice recorder. Now I thought it was interesting because I was looking on YouTube earlier to see if there are any other videos of the Tanberg Model 11. And only one video did I find that had a Tanberg Model 11 on YouTube. But the Tanberg Model 11 was not even being officially presented. There was a different Tanberg reel to rear recorder next to the Model 11 that was playing a tape. And the Model 11 was just sitting next to it, not doing anything. So this, I believe, is the first video on YouTube officially so showcasing the Tanberg Model 11 reel to rear tape recorder. Even though there's tons of pictures of this machine online, when I go to Google, there's, you know, threads about this model, people discussing it and stuff, but just a moment, stuff, but no official full-on presentation showing it recording and playing back on YouTube, as far as I could tell. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, you know, it's only a matter of time. But as time goes on, more and more things will be added to YouTube. I mean, now there's tape recorder videos all over the place on YouTube. And um, when I was, you know, first got onto YouTube years ago and I'd search for tape recorder videos, there's very, very little. Most of it were like just people goofing around with a micro cassette recorder. And one horrible video I saw was a real to real tape recorder that someone had set on fire while I was playing a tape. As supposed to be some kind of funny gig but I was very angry when I saw that video this is I saw this video years ago over 10 years ago I was very angry because it's like you're taking this very nice piece of historical equipment working condition probably might even be a rarer model I'm not sure and just freaking destroying it freaking setting it on fire what's wrong with you guys you don't know the don't do you realize how much this stuff is is worth or how much you know how the, the historical value of these machines but anyway, anyway, so this is a recording with a dynamic mic at three and three fourths inches per second. I'm going to show the limiter in operation. I'm going to turn on the limiter, which is like on a metal control, and I'm, you'll just hear the limiter in operation. But anywho, turn the level all the way up. I wasn't really much from all the way up earlier, but then again, I am running it through a line level input anyway with a microphone, so it's not even the input uh, designated for microphones. Anywho. Yes, I'm saying anywho, I'm paying my tributes uh, to my friend Stefan, although I think he would tend to say any when, because he really liked to twist things, you know. You know, a GIF file, he wouldn't call it a GIF, and he wouldn't call it a GIF either. He would call it a jife. I'm like, dang, Stefan, why? He just wanted to be different, you know? Let's set the speed to 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. Yeah, I probably should have started the recordings at the slower speed. But anyway, we're running the unit at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. You can hear kind of the difference in frequency response. When I look at the manual 
and I'll look at the frequency responses. I'll go ahead and read off the frequency responses. One and seven eighths inches per second is not the best frequency response. It's a uh, 60 hertz to 4.5 kilohertz. So uh, not the best at one and seven eighths, but it's one and seven eighths. Three and three fourths is frequency response is 50 hertz to 9,000 hertz, or 50 hertz to nine kilohertz, much better. And then a seven and a half inches per second doesn't cover the whole hearing range, but does consider cover the most, the majority. Seven and a half is 40 hertz to 16 kilohertz, which is pretty good for sound quality. So now we're going to move back to three and three fourths inches per second. You are now hearing a recording of three and three fourths. Now we're going to change it to seven and a halves. We are now running this recorder at seven and one half inches per second. Let us see how this sounds with the Sony F96. We're still using the limiter function. We'll turn off the limiter function. Now we're just running it with manual level control. I'll turn the level down. I'm speaking up really close to the mic. I'm speaking farther away now, but it's not picking up as much. Okay, so anyway, monitoring the tape, you hear the echo, uh, echo. Echo. Next, we will be showing how this unit records music um, with the music played directly from the recorder into the camera, and we'll be showing it at all three speeds. I hope you will enjoy that segment. Yeah, so the downside with this unit is the high frequency noise from the interference from the speed control circuit, but then again, it was, well, I would not be too surprised if it were related to leaky capacitors.
Well, viewers, listeners, I hope you enjoyed this video of the of the uh, Tanberg Model 11, or more precisely, the Tanberg Model 11 dash two. Reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder portable. Let's see how this looks with seven inch reels loaded on it. Shallow. Hold them. Blumen tripod. Do those little things. A reel. This is the same set of reels that came on the Sony portable recorder TC802. I'm limited with my resources at this plant here. Now these reels are from the 1950s. The tape may not be as good quality as the 1960s tape. Well, let's see how this comes out. We got seven inch there. Seven inch here. It looks pretty nice. I just wish the uh, cover was easily removable. Maybe it was at seven and a half. Let's see what I recorded on here earlier. Russian music. and electronic music to be more exact. Well viewers, more videos will be coming up in the future. I know I'll be getting two more tape recorders tomorrow. One of them from a friend and brother in Christ is giving me a, um, a realistic VSC 2000 variable speech control type tape recorder and also a co-worker at my job says he has an old box labeled that it's some kind of a tape recorder sitting in storage that he's going to be giving to me tomorrow. I don't even know if it's going to be a cassette or reel-to-reel -reel or what. But anyway, and of course there will be more short series videos coming up soon. With a shout-out given in the next short series video. Maybe two shout-outs. We'll see. I'm just playing a little more with this and I'm finding that high-pitched noise is... Not from the recording itself, actually. Here, the tape's not even moving and you can hear it. You can sort of adjust the intensity of the sound. The curiosity. Here, you can see the uh, the transport mechanism there. The three heads, you have the uh, erase, record, and play. Believe it or not, they're actually using two-track stereo heads, but they're only using one of the tracks for mono. Cap stands in there, and then punch roller. You can also see this is just a tensioner roller, because it doesn't use foam pads. It uses a tensioner roller. And then this is actually controlled here to keep the tension rather interesting design nice that they don't use foam pads this little spring fell out when I took the head cover off but it's not seeming to affect anything 
But for video documentation purposes, this is where I'm going to store the spring for now so I can find it later. This drawer right here. There. That's where the spring is.